This wild story of an outrageously dirty cop sure happened in the right place. Los Angeles, California. Because it seems a plot plucked from a gritty Hollywood heist movie. A Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department's deputy was sentenced this week for leading an armed heist of a legal marijuana warehouse, making off with $2 million in product and money. The mob reporter here with the tale of how a corrupt cop using his real sheriff's uniform, gun and truck led a crew of fake cops with a fake search warrant to fake arrest security guards and clear the place out. For an added plot twist, in the middle of the heist, the deputy even fooled LAPD cops who arrived to investigate. Let me tell you about it. The end of this story came this week, when the last man standing from the brazen heist was sent to prison. It began, however, on October 29, 2018. Although off-duty at the time, 43-year-old Mark Antrim dressed in his work gear, his gun, his sheriff's jacket, his duty belt, and even grabbed a sheriff's Ford Explorer from the station. He gathered his posse and headed to downtown LA to an area filled with industrial and commercial buildings along the San Bernardino Freeway. It's a rather bleak stretch, less than a mile away from the LAPD headquarters. Now to understand what happens, you first need to know two things. One, that California legalized adult use pot after a statewide vote and legal sales started in 2018. The second, because the fledgling industry had difficulty with corporate banking, Many facilities held a lot of its cash on site. This made them big fat targets. And the target for this heist was Steezy, a 6,500 square foot storage and retail facility, one of the largest in California. The space provides an art gallery-like interior and boasts of its Instagrammable atmosphere. It was photos of a different sort, though, that captured this action from start to finish, including some video footage exclusive to the mob reporter. At 3.11 a.m., Antrim pulled his Sheriff's Ford Explorer up to Steezy's closed gate. He waved a security guard over and showed him his badge and a fake search warrant, and the guard opened the gate. He then pulled into the parking lot, got out with two accomplices, both dressed up as cops. One even held a shotgun, adding to the intimidation factor. Antrim arrested the two male guards and locked them in the rear cage of his Sheriff's truck. By 3.15 a.m., he was at the warehouse door and showed his badge and the fake search warrant to the female employee who let them inside. He arrested her too and placed her in his truck with the two guards. At 3.21 a.m., another accomplice drove a rented Penske truck into the parking lot. The four men then started hauling together bags and boxes. They knew exactly what they were looking for and where to find it. Every good heist movie needs an inside man. And in this case, it was Christopher Myung Kim, who worked for the company for years before a dispute with its owners left him disgruntled and bitter. He left the job just a few weeks before the heist. As his revenge, Kim laid the warehouse operation out for Antrim, revealing security arrangements and protocols, how many staff there were and where they would be. He even gave him blueprints of the facility and told him which room should be hit to get the most valuable stuff. Kim didn't go on the actual raid. After all, he'd be easily recognized. There was another member of the crew, however, a lookout stationed outside, monitoring the streets and keeping in touch through walkie-talkies. He came in very handy 20 minutes into the heist when the whole job was almost blown. Someone had called the cops, the real cops. At 3.43 a.m., patrol officers from the Los Angeles Police Department arrived to investigate suspicious activity. Alerted by his lookout, Antrim casually walked to the front gate to greet them. Not everyone was as calm and collected as Antrim. The other three in the crew panicked, ditched their sheriff's jackets, and ran out the back. Antrim told the cops he was with the sheriff's drug squad and was executing a legal search warrant. At one point, he even pulled out his phone and said he was calling his sergeant and then handed the phone to one of the cops to talk to him. He was all a ruse, of course. 
but the cops bought it. By 4.16 a.m., the LAPD left Antrim to it. Antrim then called his crew to come back, and they got back to loading the haul from the warehouse into the back of the Penske truck. They then hoisted two large safes into the truck as well. Both of the safes were five feet tall. Inside was $645,000 in cash and money orders. By 5 a.m., his crew took off in the truck, and Antrim released the warehouse staff from his SUV, climbed behind the wheel, and drove off. There is always a scene in a heist movie, after the job, when the gang meets up to deal with their loot. This is as close to that as I could get. It's exclusive to the mob reporter. Here we finally see the inside man. Christopher Kim. He arrives in a white Lexus at a self-storage facility where he rented a unit the day of the heist. Antrim drives the Penske truck stuffed with the loot to meet him. He's the guy in the black shirt and hat. He's delivering 1,200 pounds in stolen product, worth an estimated $1.5 million, to hide in Kim's storage unit until they can sell it. Another of the crew, Kevin McBride, is seen meeting up with them at the end. Now on the surface, this may have seemed a good idea, but in hindsight it couldn't possibly have worked. It's one thing to rip off street dealers, like Antrim had done several times before, but it looks like he hadn't yet adjusted to the new laws because his victims here were just a business like any other. They had security and videos and lawyers and nothing to hide. In fact, state law requires a warehouse like this to have security surveillance up the wazoo. The robbery, as it turns out, was captured on 32 surveillance cameras throughout the warehouse. Lawyers for the warehouse wanted to know what the supposed raid was all about and went to the sheriff's department to find out. Imagine everyone's surprise when they realized what was really going on. When the sheriff's sergeant looked at the company's security footage, he immediately recognized Deputy Antrim. When Antrim was arrested a month after the robbery, he shifted gears once again. He struck a plea bargain with federal authorities and cooperated with prosecutors against his co-conspirators. His crew was scooped up. Most pled guilty. Kim, the inside man, however, fought the charges in court. Antrim took the stand and testified against him at his trial. Kim was found guilty by a jury and sentenced to 14 years in prison and given a $500,000 fine. Seven of the crew and all went down for the heist. Antrim was the last to be sentenced. He pleaded guilty to five felony charges earlier, but prosecutors hold them back for sentencing to make sure a cooperating witness keeps their end of the bargain and doesn't back out. On April 12, 2021, Antrim was finally sentenced. His punishment was reduced on account of his cooperation, and he was given a seven-year sentence. That's half what the inside man got. The judge said the case, quote, sounded like a movie script, unquote, and eroded the public's trust in police. Oh, it sure does. To pull all of this off, Antrim must be one heck of an actor. Maybe when he gets out of prison, he can return to Hollywood and look for work. Thanks for watching.